We have been learning that God is bigger than any fear we have. And today's lesson reinforced that truth. Miriam experienced that amazing exit from Egypt along with about two million other people. But they soon approached the Red Sea and felt trapped. The people looked up and saw the Egyptian army approaching fast after them. They were terrified. So they cried out to the Lord in panic and hysteria. Moses told the people to not be afraid, to stand firm, be still, and watch the Lord fight for them. And God went to work. As a pillar of cloud and fire, he put himself between the people and the Egyptian army, keeping his people safe. And God caused a wind to blow all night, dividing the water into two walls and drying up the seafloor between them. The next day, the Israelites took their walk from fear to faith as they tramped to the other shore. When all his people were saved, God caused that water to flow back on the Egyptian army chasing after them. The Lord fought for them. They needed only to stop being afraid and trust him. Through Moses' instructions, the trembling people were able to apply faith to their fear. They confronted it and turned it over to God. And their faithful God took over and proved that he was stronger than their enemies. What do you do with your fears? I want to give you a biblical tool that you can use to apply faith to any fear. Step one, confront it. What fears do you have right now? List the things that make you afraid, the real fears and the imaginary ones. Which ones are the most likely to tempt you to panic or to be terrified? Focus on those. Step two, ask about each one. What is my worst case scenario? Start with one of those fears, perhaps the most terrifying one and ask, what is the worst that could happen? Think realistically, not hypothetically. Step three, Consider this, if the worst I can imagine happens, could I handle it through the presence and power of Jesus Christ? As a Christian, you have the power of the one who created the universe living inside of you. Ask yourself, can he help me get through anything? The answer is a resounding yes. Hebrews 4 tells us that our high priest, Jesus, knows and understands what we're going through. So we can go to him for mercy and help in our time of need. And that help usually comes from God's power within us. Paul says in Ephesians 3, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us power in us and for us. So say to yourself, if the worst I can imagine happens, I can handle it through the presence and power of Jesus Christ. Step four, remember the four truths essential to faith. God loves me. God knows what is going on in my life. God can do something about it. I can trust his goodness in whatever he chooses to do. Repeat them to yourself over and over again. Believe them. Count on them. Now that you have narrowed down the fear, determined you can handle it through Jesus' power and presence, remember those four truths essential to faith, hand it all to God. Step five is Pray. Prayer is simply talking to God about anything and everything. This is where you trust the Lord, where you hand it over to Him. You can thank the Lord for His presence and His goodness and anything else that comes to mind. You can ask Him for the courage and peace to ride out the storm. Where the Bible is clear, you can claim God's promises by faith like the promise of peace. Jesus told his followers in John 14, 
Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. That's from John 16. Anytime you can ask for deliverance and protection, but you cannot hold God to promises He hasn't made. He hasn't promised immunity from natural calamity, from illness, or from troubles. Step six, live life securely in Him. What actions can you take? First, we need to remember that fear as an emotion is designed by God to alert us to danger so that we will take action against it. So while trusting God and praying for peace and courage, we can do a few things. We can take common sense precautions. We can be wise in the world and how we deal with strangers and strange situations and other things where we need to be wise. We can trust God to show us what to do and to give us strength when we are weak. So take your fears, any fears. Use this tool to apply faith to that fear. And that's the next step on your walk from fear to faith. Lord, I will remember all you brought me through. When I am afraid, I will trust.